Welcome to video number seven in our Robot C and VEC series. In this video, I'd like to define and show you how to use functions, or also known as voids, in your program. Let's go ahead and look at our task description. The LED will blink for three times, on for a second, and then off for a second. So the LED is going to pulse. The motor will then run for three seconds forward at full speed. The LED is then going to repeat the process of blinking three times. Then the motor is going to run for three seconds backwards at half speed. Then the LED is going to blink three times again. Then the motor will run for three seconds forward at full speed. Um, so that's what it did the first time. So we have some repeated processes in there. And that's one of the biggest things that we use functions or voids for. So just what are functions or voids? Functions allow us to group a bunch of code together like many programs. Uh, we use them a lot of times when we want to reference the same grouping of code multiple times in the program. It also will allow us to break the program up into separate thoughts. So the task main is actually the fairly simple program and the rest of our program lives in these little sub-programs. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and develop all the code that's needed for running the motors. So I'll take care of all of that first. So I'll be right back. Okay, so there we go. So the idea of this whole LED is it's supposed to be a warning process. So the LED is going to blink for three times, letting me know that the motor is supposed to start. So before each one of these sequences starts, we're going to have something about the blinking LED. Okay, so let's move on to this whole function void thing. Now the first thing we have to do is actually define it. It has to understand that inside the program, whenever I use this line of code, that it is a void. So we're going to type in void. We're going to give it some type of name. And then for whatever reason, we need two parentheses and a semicolon. Well, I know the semicolon's there because it's a statement. Remember, that's a one and done. But why it needs the parentheses, um, that's usually something I forget. Um, so I need to make sure that I have the two parentheses there. So that's it. I've now defined every time it sees the word blink LED that it is a void. So what does it look like inside the code? Well, inside the code, it's just blink LED. I still need the parentheses and the semicolon. So basically what I'm going to do is make my own natural language. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste it. The only difference between this and the natural language is we need to have those two parentheses there. So it's been defined. It knows what it is. I've gone ahead and called it out in the program. And now what I need to do is build it. And it's a structure. So I'm going to build it outside of task main, actually below task main. So I'll go ahead and type it again. Void blink LED. This time I'm not going to put the semicolon. I'm going to go ahead and put on my start curly bracket and my end curly bracket. So this down here is going to be the structure of the actual void itself. So what do I need to do? I need to blink the LED three times. If you wanted to put that into a counting loop, then we can do that. Um, so I'm going to cheat this time. I'm just going to go ahead and use the natural language. Natural language, repeat for number of times. I'm going to do this three times, and then we'll go ahead and replace this body with our blink LED. So LED on, LED off, our weight, and I'll need a weight below it. I like to go ahead and get rid of all these extra spaces. So the time was one second on, one second off, and this is still our green LED that we've been using. Okay, so I've defined blink LED as a void. I've gone ahead and located it inside the program three times. And then down outside of task main, I've gone ahead and developed the structure itself. Let's go ahead and hit compile, fingers crossed, and see if it finds any errors. Well, no errors so far. So let's go ahead and download it to the robot. And see what happens. One, 
two, three, So a function actually leaves the program, runs the void, and then comes back to the program wherever it left. So it saw the word blink LED, it left, went down to that structure, and then is coming back right where it left to run the rest of those processes. And then it should end the code. So is there anything else I can do? Well, I said not only is it the ability to group code together that I'm going to use multiple times, but it'll also allow me to break up my program. So I'm repeating this process here as well. Um, so this could be my forward motor. So I'm going to go ahead and create two more voids. Void forward motor. It doesn't need the space. And then void back. Now I can use that again. So I'm actually going to create another void down here. So why don't I just copy all of that void. So this is going to be forward. I can copy all of that. It's not in a repeat. Get rid of that extra click bracket. I'm going to have another one. Is my motor forward? We'll change that to back. So task main is actually going to look fairly simple. Um, task main is just going to say blink LED. So now my program itself just shows it kind of as a natural language, so it's little mini codes. So it's going to blink the LED, then it's going to run the motor forward, then it's going to blink the LED, then the motor back, then blink the LED, then the motor forward. A lot of people like using voids this way, so the program itself is actually fairly simple, and then the code, um, the body of the code, actually lives all in functions. So we'll go ahead and compile it, no errors, and we should get the exact same results. And that's it. That's how we use functions and voids into our programming.